gosh, I haven't done anything like this since the sewing bee. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. So my friend Victoria, we got chatting and we decided to take on this challenge to recreate something that we like from a ready to wear brand. Now the brand that caught our eye was um, Dream Sister Jane. Victoria knows about them and she's had her eye on them. I thought, you know what? I'm up for the challenge. Let's do it. We decided to pick whatever catches our eye the most and I'm going to do that with you. Sister Jane, there we are. Yeah, when I looked at their website, I thought, oh, vintage. Oh, okay, okay. But then um, I'm having a look and I can already see that they do look quite trendy, uh, modern. There's quite a bit of diversity on their page as well. I like a bit of diversity. So looking um, at the shop, right. Wow, sleeves, hello. Wow, look at that. Oh, I, I like, I like. This looks like um, a bit of jacquard fabric. And it's a jack. Well, there we are. There it says it. Jacquard retro blouse, a hundred and sixty-nine pounds. Um. Oh, more. Look at that. Look at the. Look, my gosh. Look at the sleeves. Wow. Yeah. No. I, I like. I like what I see. So I'm gonna go to dresses because I've been having a thing for um maxi dresses. Well, remember we're going for what catches the eye. So i'm just gonna keep scrolling through oh this catches my eye nice but i won't normally wear dresses with a high neck because i am a full busted woman oh look oh sleeves hello oh hello why is it that the high neck stuff keep um, catching my eye is that a sign um oh i like this though I like, oh gosh guys look at this i think it's the print as well that is even even more eye-catching i think it's the print and not just the de the design i like what i see look at the oh what? <gasps> look at that guys 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 okay uh, i think i found the one sugar blossom tiered cami dress and it's not that expensive 85 pounds okay let's have a better look at this fabric and this design it's got a tie detail how many ruffles how many tiers six imagine if victoria makes exactly this dress <laughs> okay <laughs> it's not a bad thing is it i found the one i just, i think what i like about this is the the print like the scales of the prints you've got the large and you've got the small scale print i think this fabric is a bit of like a georgette fabric and um, so it looks lightweight because of the way the fabric drapes and i feel like i can see a bit of her leg which means that it's a bit see-through so it's quite lightweight so we need to opt for something lightweight or as close as possible but now i have a few thoughts on copying and recreating we get inspired by things that we see online or in magazines or in store and it's there's a, a fine line between you know someone designing something and someone else copying it so i'm going to try my best to add my own stamp to this design and not be a copycat what do you think about that do you when you see things that you like do you, do you do you feel like you're copying someone's work when you create clothes for yourself when you get inspired by things you see online let me know here yeah, i've just gone through my stash and i have these two fabrics which are similar in weight as well i've got these two options black and brown black and brown is quite a it's a unique color combination and then i've got these two but the problem with these two is um they're cotton and um, but then who says you can't make something work you can't. do you know what let's just have a look at the options i don't know what's wrong with me we're going to switch things up a little bit and i've got some ankara fabric <laughs> so i have this one here i think i've got about a yard left of this brown fabric then i've got it in red and then i've got the pink option and then i've got the green option <laughs> you already know that i've got issues so i am leaning towards the ankara just adding my own stamp to it and um changing it up rather than going for polka dots so i think we're gonna go with ankara fabric so 
the bodice is a bit of a short one so it's not a full bodice um, so we're gonna have to like reduce the bodice just beneath the bust and um, it's not going to be fully fitted around the bust and um, we're going to have some thick ties I really like this um, planner well it's my planner haha <laughs> if you like a link if you'd like to get one for yourself I'll leave the link in the description box below but um, a few notes it's going to have princess seams in front and at the back and um, it's gonna have four tiers um, and all of them would gr it will grow as they go down we also need some way to get this on so I'm thinking a back zip or a side zipper a back zipper would be better because um, a side zipper would alter the you know the way the tears of the gathers would form so we're gonna go with a back zipper um because this is fitted i mean if i made it as loose as the sister jane option then we we'll probably won't need a zipper but i will be adding a zipper and i'll use an invisible invisible zipper i have a video here on the channel on how to work with invisible zippers um but this would have been a perfect um, candidate for no zips because it's got um shoulder ties but it is what it is now that i have decided on the design and i know what exactly is going to go on the garment and how it's going to be constructed and we have an idea of what fabric we're going to work with the next step now would be to go ahead and print a copy of my basic bodice i'll leave the link to the basic bodice set in the description box below and transform it into a princess seam um, so all these things i'm going to do and i'll get back to let you know how i get on with it have done quite a few things so far i have cut out the the tears that i'm going to have for the skirt the bottom half of the dress the top half is pink obviously as you can see i used the same material because they're going to be they were going to be in the scrap box anyway so i decided to use them for the lining so the main pattern has been cut out twice so one would be the outer shell and the other one would be the inner shell but with the inner shell i didn't bother about pattern matching because pattern matching has used up a lot of the fabric got like ties the ties will not really match on the inside because i don't have a lot of fabric left so for the bottom half of the skirts here's what i've realized now i have the <laughs> okay so here's what i have the, sh the first one would be green so pink for the bodice and then green and then pink and then green i mean the people have spoken so i have to do what the people have said <laughs> if you're not following me on instagram please follow me on instagram that was where i did the poll and that's where i found out what people suggested for me to do it's really really fun it's pink and green so i've done the green then pink green then pink i did not go for the dress to be um like going along this way because I felt like that's what everyone does. Like everyone who I've seen use this fabric always cuts it out this way. So I thought I would go for it this way and it will be a nice play on the, the patterns because you see more green and then a little bit of brown and then more green and a little. Now, I have a bit of a dilemma. Going back to the dress, the inspiration dress, I consider my hips to be large and I'm a, my hips are 44 
they might be 45 now because of um lockdown <laughs> but they're 45 i think they're 44 and a half 45 and um, which would mean that it will be really voluminous and i feel some type of way walking around with lots of ruffles jiggling around and <laughs> <laughs> so i um i just had a bit of a thought and i thought mm, i want to i make clothes that i would wear over and over again not just for a blog post or for a youtube video so i have to be practical about it so plans are going to have to change so i think what i'll do is i'll just create gathers and then attach the gathers onto another set of gathers if that Yesterday I stuck to the plan and um, lining was so easy. I actually had two pieces and I sewed them together and um, turned them inside out because I mean the straps are just single pieces so it's not joined at the shoulders so it was really easy to do. sure that I understitched the seam allowance onto the wrong side to make sure that the seam like the the neckline and the armhole stay flat and you don't see any bit of the lining you have to finish the raw edge of the piece that you're about to attach the gathers to also i sewed the lining to the main piece together so you would see here that i do not have any raw edges showing and on the other side i have the the ruffles on top The very last tear has been gathered and I left that last so I'm going to go over, over now and attach this to the right side. Currently the raw edges at the top of the ruffles have been finished by folding over the fabric 
two times and then like so it's just a bit like a hem but an upside down hem and then i've done two rows of stitches to gather the fabric and then i'm going to attach it to the the bottom tier of the skirt and um, i don't have much fabric left now because this has used up a lot of fabric but you know what it's going to be worth it in the end um, so over to the sewing machine we go thing now is going to be imagine if um vic does the same thing as me that would be so funny won't it that would mean that we're in sync i can't wait to see what she creates don't forget to check out her channel to see what she creates and we're going to have the videos up at the same time i'll leave the link to her channel in the description box below and please don't forget to subscribe to her channel and show her some love that I am absolutely in love with my new maxi dress it's not exactly like the one on the website the ready to wear one but it suits my style it suits my body type um, key things it, well the key reason why I think it suits my body type better is it doesn't have the cut across neckline um, in, that is on the website because um, I find that those types of necklines like they sort of dig into my bust line and I don't like them so I like this one because it has some sort of um, a natural sort of neckline and can you see it goes down like that and I love that a tip that I'd give you if you want to have a go at doing exactly what I've done is please stay stitch the neckline otherwise it will do some gaping and you don't want it to gape I think from time to time it's good to have a go at um, challenging ourselves and ex ex you know like extending or stretching our our knowledge that little extra bit it might take a bit longer than you normally would when you create clothes but it's just the challenge is excellent and um, I think I should try more of these sort of challenges. Oh, let me know what ready to wear line I should have a go at recreating next time. Let me know what you think about mine in comparison to the ready to wear sample on the website. And um, I have these videos here showing you how I hack basic sewing patterns into different designs. And I hope to see you over at those videos. Enjoy the rest of your day and all the very best. Take care. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>